Ladies and gentlemen, this is an update for the Yellowstone supervolcano hit by a swarm of earthquakes. It says, Yellowstone supervolcano hit by a swarm of more than 400 earthquakes in one week. Like I said, this is an update. We got pictures and a video, and then a little summary. So it shows the epicenter right there. And then this is the Grand Prismatic Hot Spring in Yellowstone National Park. Map shows the magnitude 3 earthquake that struck Yellowstone on June 19th. Okay, let's go down here. Yellowstone supervolcano has been hit by a series of earthquakes, with more than 400 recorded since June 12th. The latest was recorded on Monday, June 19th. That's yesterday with a magnitude 3 earthquake striking 8.6 miles north-northeast of the West Yellowstone, Montana. The swarm began last week and on June 15th saw a magnitude 4.5, 4.5 earthquake take place in Yellowstone National Park. The epicenter of the shock was located in Yellowstone National Park, 8 miles north-northeast of the town of West Yellowstone, Montana. Scientists from the University of Utah, which monitors Yellowstone Volcano, said. They also said the earthquake was reportedly felt in the towns of West Yellowstone and Gardner, Montana, and Yellowstone National Park, and elsewhere in the surrounding region. The earthquake was the largest to have hit Yellowstone since March 30, 2014, when a magnitude 4.8 earthquake was recorded 18 miles to the east near the Norris Geyser Basin. The 4.5 earthquake is part of an energetic sequence of earthquakes in the same area that began on June 12th. The statement continued, The sequence has included approximately 30 earthquakes of magnitude 2 and larger and 4 earthquakes of magnitude 3 and larger, including today's magnitude 4.5 earthquake. 4.5 As of June 19th, 464 events have been recorded. 464 events. Uh, most of these ranged in the magnitude of 0 to 1, with 5 less than 0, indicating they occurred at depths ranging from about 0 miles to about 9 miles. This is the highest number of earthquakes at Yellowstone within a single week in the past 5 years, but is fewer than weekly counts during similar earthquake swarms in 2002-2004, Eight and ten. So So this is this is where it hit in the park. If you've ever been there, it's huge. I don't know where Old Faithful is on that map. Alright, so and continuing, it says the University of Utah is part of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which monitors volcanic and earthquake activity in Yellowstone National Park. Seismic activity at volcanoes can signal an eruption is due to take place, although predicting exactly when a volcano will erupt at present is impossible. Experts at the U.S. Geological Survey say the risk of an eruption at Yellowstone supervolcano is low, they always say that. The current volcano alert level remains normal, and the activation color code, which provides information on the potential risk to flights, risk to fights? Sorry, it says information on the potential risk to fights is green, meaning the volcano is in a normal, non-eruptive state. You'd think it would say flights, but... I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. A spokesperson from the USGS and YVO tells Newsweek the current activity appears to be slowly winding down and that no other geological activity has been detected. The probability of a large eruption at Yellowstone in the next year is currently calculated at 1 in 730,000. I still don't like those odds. Those odds are still creepy. 
But what would happen if it did erupt? In 2014, scientists with the USGS published a report where they modeled what would happen if a large explosive eruption took place at the supervolcano. Their findings showed most of the country would be covered in a blanket of ash, with some areas being buried up to a meter deep. However, the USGS also said that if Yellowstone were to erupt, it would likely be far smaller than the one modeled. They also described what would be concerning signs of activity. Uh, Yellowstone hasn't erupted for 70,000 years, so it is going to take some impressive earthquakes and ground uplift to get things started, the team said in a press release. Uh, let me just say something real quick. I think that it would uh, happen just very, very fast. Besides, and like just like the one that happened uh, in Mount St. Helens, it just uh, it just pretty much blew. There was some rumblings, little rumblings, to uh, indicate that it was going to pop, but it just went boom. Besides intense earthquake swarms, with many earthquakes above four and five, we expect rapid and notable uplift around the caldera, possibly tens of inches per year. Finally, rising magma will cause explosions from the boiling temperature geothermal reservoirs. Even with explosions, earthquakes, and notable ground uplift, the most likely volcanic eruptions would be the type that would have minimal effect outside the park itself. Oh, give me a break. The story has been updated with the current number of events since the swarm began. So basically what they're saying is there's still earthquakes happening. Ladies and gentlemen, see how they write it? Don't worry. Don't worry. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. But it's like uh, just yesterday there was a even larger earthquake than all the other large, uh, largest ones of the swarm. You know, I did a story on this. I covered a story on this a couple days ago. It was at 360. Now we're at 400, and we've had one yesterday, which was 4.5. They're getting bigger. Uh, this is pretty sketchy, ladies and gentlemen. There was a, a video on when I went to my computer, but on the um, the mobile, they don't have it. So I guess I'll take off. This has been James from the Research Revolution. I'm out.